Lakeview Cemetery was founded in 1872 as Seattle Masonic Cemetery in the Capitol Hill neighborhood and later renamed for its view of Lake Washington to the east. Although most well-known today is the final resting place of legendary martial arts master and film star Bruce Lee and his son Brandon, Lakeview is also known locally as the burial ground of virtually every important famous and infamous early Seattle pioneer of any distinction. Today we'll explore some of these grave sites and learn the stories behind the headstones and monuments. Richard Achilles Ballinger was born in Boonesboro, Iowa in 1858. He graduated from Williams College in 1884 with a degree in law. In 1892, he moved to Seattle and began practicing law. In 1894, he was elected judge of the Washington Superior Court. Ten years later, in 1904, he became mayor of Seattle. This stellar career in government resulted in what should have been his crowning achievement, being appointed Secretary of the Interior by President William Taft in 1909. However, this ultimately led to his downfall. He was plagued by a series of scandals during his two years as Secretary of the Interior, including land deals with cronies, coal and hydroelectric leasing deals for lands supposed to be under federal protection. Although President Taft stood up for his embattled Secretary, Ballinger was finally forced to resign on March 12, 1911. Ballinger's refusal to resign during nine months of investigations into these scandals, coupled with Taft's steadfast refusal to fire him, ultimately split the Republican Party and contribu contributed to Taft's defeat in the 1912 election to Woodrow Wilson. George Kinnear was an early Seattle real estate mogul responsible for the earliest development of Queen Anne Hill. While serving in the Union Army during the Civil War, Kinnear sent most of his pay home to his mother, who dutifully saved and invested the money. Upon his return to Illinois after the war, she presented him with a sum of $3,600, a small fortune at the time. He invested the money in cattle and land and grew rich. He'd become interested in the Pacific Northwest and in 1874 made a trip to the area. Suitably impressed by the boom town of Seattle, he bought land in the Queen Anne District. Four years later, he returned with his mother and brothers to Seattle, sold his land in Illinois and invested in more acreage in Seattle. In 1885 to 86, Kinnear advocated for and helped to build a wagon road connecting Puget Sound to eastern Washington over Snoqualmie Pass. This road still exists today in the form of Interstate 90. In 1887, he donated 14 acres to the city of Seattle on the western slope of Queen Anne Hill, known today as Kinnear Park. Pontius family 
probably did more in a very indirect manner to change the look of Seattle than any other pioneer family. In the 1880s, Seattle, still a frontier city, built almost entirely of wood, had been very slow to grow, but it was booming now. Railroads brought more people west. The summer of 1889 was exceptionally hot and dry. On June 6th, 1889, in the basement of the Pontius Building, which was located where, on what is now First Avenue and Madison Street, a carpenter's glue pot boiled over and ignited the floor of the building. This fire spread rapidly throughout the city and raged until early the next day. Basically every building all the way down to Elliott Bay lay in ashes. The city had been burned to the ground. Known as the Great Seattle Fire, it was actually a blessing in disguise. It gave the city an opportunity to realign some of the discrepancies that had arisen between Doc Maynard's and Arthur Denny's original conflicting street layout. So they turned some of the streets away from the way they had been. They were running into each other diagonally. And it turned out really for the best who would have thought that a fire that burned the city to the ground would end up working out really for everyone's benefit. Moses Maddox. In 1864, Moses Maddox built the Occidental Hotel on a triangular lot formed by James Street, Gessler Way, and 2nd Avenue. The Occidental was the first of three hotels to occupy the site, each grander than its predecessor. He also owned and maintained a drugstore on Front Street, which is now known as First Avenue. Maddox also served as the fourth mayor of Seattle, but for a very short period, only two months, from June to August of 1873. There is no record I could find of why his term in office was such a short one. The claim for being the first white settler in the Elliott Bay area could be made for William Latimer. He crossed the Cascades in the spring of 1850, possibly being the first white man to travel across Snoqualmie Pass. He then built a small hut at the present day intersection of 2nd Avenue and Columbia Street where he lived during the summer of 1850. At some point in the fall of that year, he left Elliott Bay for Portland in the Oregon Territory. Latimer returned to Seattle in 1852 and again in 1853, but not much was seen of him after that until he returned much later in 1882 as a wealthy real estate developer. In the pioneer days of Seattle, there were two men known as Joe Foster, not related. One, a pioneer of 1852, was a solid, upstanding member of the pioneer community served with distinction in the territorial legislature. This large family gravesite is that of the good Joe Foster, surrounded by the graves of his wife, children, and other family members. The second Joe Foster was a very bad dude. A thief, a liar, in trouble with the law, a wife beater. He was the husband of Princess Angeline, daughter of Chief Self, and later he came to a violent end. But here we have a very impressive monument and grave site for the good guy.
Charles Prosh, a pioneer newspaper publisher of Puget Sound, became editor of the Puget Sound Herald in the late 1850s. His son Thomas Prosh also became editor of the Seattle Post Intelligencer in 1885. He wrote comprehensive chronological history of Seattle and biographies of both Doc Maynard and his wife Catherine Maynard, two of the founders of the city. Thomas Prosh also planted the giant redwood tree that grows on the highest point of Lakeview Cemetery.